Hi and welcome back to ADF Architecture TV. My name is Grant Ronald and I'm Director of Product Management in Oracle's Application Development Tools team. Now in this episode we're going to have a look and discuss some of the design and the architectural challenges of building ADF applications or more specifically the services that will be accessed from mobile devices. Now one of the things I should state up front is that this isn't an introduction or a primer for our client-side mobile framework. So if you're not already familiar with technologies such as ADF Mobile, then you can check out some of our videos and documentation on YouTube, OTN, and the links at the end of this presentation. Instead, what we're going to do is look at the architecture and design decisions you need to consider when building mobile apps and the challenges of integrating those mobile apps with back-end services. And we'll look at things like REST, SOAP, ADF Business Components, SDO services. Now, since I may be talking about future features um, and maybe future releases, here's a very short safe harbour statement. So you might be thinking that mobile apps are simply just a different channel for the same applications that you're already running on the web. And in some cases they are, but in many cases there are real differences that go beyond the end user device. In many cases you'll have to go beyond the traditional architectural decisions you've made in the past and start looking at things like do you present a subset of application functions on a mobile device? This might be because the mobile user has a, a different job role than those in the back end office or it might be because of the physical characteristics of the device. The fact that your physical screen size is smaller and the ability for fast text entry is impacted might mean that you have differences in the applications you build for mobile access. But on the flip side, the fact that a mobile device has a GPS and a camera might mean that you now have new opportunities. You might capture information with a picture rather than text and you might capture information using voice or you might even shape information based on somebody's physical location. And these are all decision points that go beyond the traditional architectural decisions you might have been making in the past. You also have to look at how the mobile application will consume services and communicate with your enterprise. After all, whilst you use the power of the mobile device for some work, you're probably going to rely on remote services for other functions. Now, technically, this might be SOAP or REST, it might be JSON or XML, HTTP or HTTPS. These are just some of the decisions you have to make. You also have to consider what interfaces you might expose. The information you expose to your web apps may in fact be different to those you're consuming from mobile devices. And this will all have to sit inside your existing corporate architecture and work with existing implementations and technologies, including things like security. And of course, the very nature of mobile devices makes security an essential focus of your efforts. Now, from a technical standpoint, on-device applications, such as those developed with ADF Mobile, support various protocols and technologies that you might choose for your mobile initiative. So for example, your mobile application might want to access remote pages like a corporate homepage or a directory lookup. Or you might want to access remote services. Products such as ADF and ADF Mobile support you in these decisions. So currently ADF Mobile supports you to consume both SOAP and REST services and depending on when you're viewing this recording you might find we have further enhanced some of our support for some additional REST features as well. So the physical aspects of consuming SOAP and REST services from ADF mobile applications is something the Oracle framework already supports you with. Of course, the very nature of any mobile application means there are challenges. Firstly, by their very nature, mobile applications are just that, they're mobile. And this means that it might be more difficult for the enterprise to manage those devices and or the applications on them. Devices might be being used offline, either deliberately or a result of patchy network connections. And of course, there's the added complication of bring your own device as well. 
And this has an impact on things such as upgrade. So imagine you have to change some of your enterprise APIs. You need to be able to upgrade those APIs and at the same time ensure that the mobile application that consumes them also updates and uses these new APIs as well. And this isn't always straightforward. So one major decision when building services for consumption by mobile clients, you have to guarantee that any back-end API changes should happen in sync with the upgrades to your mobile applications as well. Either that or you have to ensure that your APIs remain stable enough and they don't change. Of course, this isn't something that's easily guaranteed, although you might consider building something like a generic proxy which acts as a front end and it would be generic enough to protect any callers from any changes that come much later on in the application's lifetime. The other option is you could support multiple versions of the back-end service so that different versions of the mobile app just use different versions of the back-end service. You just have to make sure they sync up. And of course, not all changes will require you to maintain a, a different version or upgrade a version. You might just have a bug fix and it can simply happen in the back end and any version of the mobile client application uses that the next time it's called. However, any changes that you do make to the API itself will probably require some sort of uh, version update. And it goes without saying that if you do something like changing your protocol from SOAP to REST would have quite a considerable impact unless you use a product such as a service bus to protect you from those changes. The bottom line here is that whatever you do, you need a very strong SOA and an API governance. But this problem isn't unique to web services only. You have the same problems with web application content. Now remember, an on-device mobile app can use web pages itself as part of its content. And those web pages could be thought of as a service and they could change as well. Now it could be that the content is being read by human, so maybe it doesn't matter. It's a little bit more forgiving than an API that requires specific information in specific order. But there are exceptions. Any page that requires URL parameters has an implied contract there between the calling and the call page. And if a page content itself is going to be used as data source, then it might be very important that the consumer of the page and the page itself are working at the same version. In this case, you have to look at possibly versioning URLs, and in fact, ADF Mobile has the ability through something called configuration services to define different service endpoints so that if a service endpoint should be updated, then the mobile application itself can update and use that new URL. Another technique to aid you when you're building mobile applications against web services is you might choose to implement some sort of heartbeat or echo web service. Now the idea here is that you have a very simple web service that takes no parameters or authentication and it simply allows you to check that the web service is up and, and activated. It could even return some sort of version information so you can establish if you're running against the correct web service. And this can be quite a useful feature when you're debugging calls to remote services. So let's have a look at a more concrete example. Let's assume you've already been developing ADF applications and you want to reuse some of the code or business services you've already built into the systems. How can you reuse existing ADF business logic? Now firstly, ADF business components such as EOs and VOs can't directly be reused or run inside or part of your on-device application. Um, you know, in many ways this isn't really a problem because typically these application features would be part of your middleware solution 
and you would expose those and reuse them as services rather than trying to put them on device. So it's those services that you would be that would be consumed by the on-device application. So an ADF business components application module, for example, typically represents uh, an app use case, and that AM can very easily be deployed and exposed as a web service in JDevelop and ADF. So if you want to expose an AM as a SOAP service, for example, you simply have to take the application module, define which view objects and methods you want to expose, and this will automatically be deployed as a SOAP web service by JDeveloper. This is something we support in JDeveloper and ADF 11G. Now for the 12C code line in ADF, we are looking at adding more complete support for uh, AMs as REST services. But for the 11G release, you can still expose AMs as RESTful services. You just have to do a little bit more hand coding to, to get there. There is a white paper dedicated to this topic as well as a number of technical videos uh, and links will be posted at the end of this video. However, it may be that with the complexity of your existing ADF application, rather than simply exposing the application module that you've already developed, maybe it makes more sense to build an interface or facade that reuses the AMs you've already developed, but it's tailored for your specific mobile consumer. So you still have a very high level of reuse, but you have that with a custom facade. So in the example you can see in the screen, you could build a facade as a separate application interface. You can reuse the view objects and applications from your existing application logic and of course you can build completely new view objects if you have functionality which is only available in your mobile application. The main advantage of the service facade is that you can fine tune or specifically tune service enabled app modules in order to reach the targets set by the service level agreements. So specific interfaces of facades for specific consumers. And don't forget that the existing application modules in your ADF application are often built and used for stateful access by web users, which in some cases or many cases is a different use case than a service layer interaction. The key point here is you reuse and expose the interfaces that you need for your specific mobile consumer use cases. Now there is another solution to consider which can complement ADF and help you manage your services. And one possible option is a service bus, such as Oracle Service Bus. And this provides a virtualization or mediation layer that sits between the, the producer and the consumer. So in this example, the HR mobile app talks only to the service bus. The fact that the service bus could request a different host is transparent to the client. So in effect, hosts can come and go or change without it impacting the client or the consumer. And this is called location transparency. The service bus can also ensure compatibility if the back-end service is updated or revised. So using a generic proxy on the service bus, the clients can call the service bus with some sort of discriminator information to determine which version it needs. The service bus can determine which back-end service to call and if required, perform data transformations if there are differences between these versions. And in the final example, we have the service bus where it can perform some dynamic routing. So you could have some intelligence within the service bus as to which service should be called and so you can remove that coding decision and any possible maintenance from the mobile app and centralize it into your middleware. So what have we discovered in this session? Firstly, we've got a great set of technologies for building on-device mobile applications. However, that's only one part of the puzzle and it could be argued that it's probably the smallest part of the puzzle. The biggest challenge is how you connect those 
on device applications to your back end. For this effort, you need a plan and a strategized strategy for harmonizing your traditional app development and the services that your mobile apps are going to be consuming. In fact, there have been some recent announcements at the end of 2013 around a product offering called Oracle Mobile Suite that's specifically targeted to bring together the on-device and the back-end development as well. If you're interested in finding out any more, there are a number of links that you can see here and on this page as well. And thank you very much for watching ADF Architecture TV.